For the year 2024, Xiaomi released their newest device. This is the Redmi Turbo 3 and it is placed on their mid-range performance lineup. So, not to be confused this with the Redmi Note T and the Redmi Note Turbo series. This is the first generation of the Redmi Turbo series according to Xiaomi. And for the box, you can see it is covered in carbon fiber and there is like a rainbow, rainbowish text. Here, written Redmi Turbo 3. Here on the side, Redmi Turbo 3. Here on the bottom of the box, Redmi. And here on the bottom, you can see it. here it is written Redmi Turbo 3. It is in titanium color. The variant here we have is 12256 GB. For the colors, you can get is titanium, black, green, and of course, their special edition, which is the Harry Potter edition. Then for the variants here, we have 12256 GB as their base variant. Then next to that is the 12512 GB. Next to that is the 16512 GB. Then the highest variant that you can get is the 16 1 terabyte variant. Now for the unboxing. Here we can see there is a cardboard insert here. And if you open that, you can see the typical SIM ejector tool. We have here the manual, which is written in Chinese, but there's no need to read this. Then here is our free case that comes in the box. And it is actually quite premium to the touch since it is finished in matte black. And it has a um, rubber case feel to it. Moving forward, here we have the device. But before that, let us see its cable and its 90 watts charger. And the brick is relatively light for a 90 watts charging brick. And it is small compared to Xiaomi's 65 watts charger. Now for the device. So here it is the titanium color as I have stated a while ago and as you can see it is very shiny and actually it is finished in matte not glossy so there will be no fingerprint marks left on the back of the device even if you rub your fingers. Then here on the side it is also in matte finish and for the back and the sides it is actually made out of plastic but as you can hear it is solid plastic no so the build quality here it may be plastic but the plastic used in this device is actually pretty nice and for the feel it is pretty light to be honest because this phone weighs around 179 grams which is around 20 grams lighter than your average device so this is just for you guys i actually have here the Redmi Turbo 3 Harry Potter Special Edition which is pretty hard to get because this is only limited to XXXX amounts of um, stocks globally and here as you can see the box design compared to the Redmi Note 12 Turbo is much more premium for me and here at the bottom you can see that the device comes in at 16512 GB and this is the only variant that the Harry Potter comes in for the unboxing there is a magnet here and here to keep it locked and this is the design Now, compared to the Redmi Note of Turbo Harry Potter Edition, this doesn't come with a lot of free stuff compared to it. So, here's the SIM ejector tool, which is pretty nice. It is actually a pretty nice SIM ejector tool. And here on the back, then for the inside, we can see there's a paper that is folded. 
and if we unfold the paper we can see the paper written there's like the guide on this is the volume rocker power button and the sim and the usb type c port of the device so technically this is just the same as the white paper that we've seen on the regular um, version of the redmi turbo 3 and here on the back it is all written in chinese Let's put that aside. Then here we have the included case, which is pretty nice for a special edition device. And here on the back, it is finished in, I mean, it's not, pla I mean, it is made out of plastic, as you can hear, but there's some kind of texture to it. Pretty, uh, pretty, this design is pretty nice and here on the side it is made out of plastic also but it is made out of matte plastic and this is the device but let us set that aside first because here on the bottom there's a sword as you can see here on the back Redmi Turbo 3 Special Edition featuring Harry Potter. And on the inside is the power brick, which has the word Harry Potter written in it. And it is in color black. So unlike the regular version, this is a tailor-made. It is tailor-made for the Harry Potter edition only. Not only the charging brick, but also the cable that comes in the box. As you can see, it is in color black, which is pretty nice. Because for me, I like the black color compared to the white color because it doesn't um, attract much dirt especially here in the philippines where you know the air is not that clean and let's unbox this device and as you can see the front still looks similar but on the side as you can see it is finished in in a somewhat dark violet bluish color and it is matte finish and here is the star of the show. It is the back cover, which looks very elegant. So let's start off with the bottom, okay? So here we have like a matte texture here and there is written Hogwarts, as you can see. Then it has a somewhat like gold-like look to it. And if you move the device around, as you can see, the reflection, the detail, the what do you call this, the attention to detail is pretty spot on. And here you can see the small little details that Xiaomi made. I'm not a Harry Potter fan, so I don't know what these are. But if you're a Harry Potter fan, please comment down below on what this means. Okay? So here on the top, it is finished in glossy, glossy plastic, and damn, the quality, like look. Oh. So this, this is truly an amazing special edition device by Xiaomi. As you can see here, there's like little... Uh, what do you call this icons or logos here that is like a shadow here on the back and also the flash Damn. and if you boot up the device it will still show you redmi powered by android on the start but wait for it Wait for it.
that's the special um, boot up animation if you get the Harry Potter edition then as you can see here the default theme on the special edition is Harry Potter theme and it actually looks pretty decent and if we open up the home screen as you can see everything is Harry Potter theme so as you can see here all of the um, what do you call this the default apps are in Harry Potter theme especially on the weather app as you can see here the castle the moon everything is made for the Harry Potter edition but unfortunately on if you open the default apps you are going to get the default um what do you call this the usuals no there's no like um custom made default app design or whatnot it's just the icons that are different for the display here we have a 6.67 inch amoled display that is quad hd resolution which is pretty surprising for the price Point of this device and the pixel density of the display is at 446 ppi the display also includes 120 Hz refresh rate Dolby Vision HDR10 plus 68 billion colors and its peak brightness according to Xiaomi is at 2400 nits it also comes in with a TUV Rainland low blue light protection which according to them protects your eyes from the harmful blue light that the display emits. For the display protection of the device, this device has the Corning Gorilla Glass Victus. It may not be the latest Corning Gorilla Glass Victus 2, but still it does the job better than the other devices on the market at this price point. The display that Xiaomi has placed on this device is excellent as expected because of its AMOLED display it has a very good color reproduction then for the resolution it comes in at 1.5k resolution or QHD resolution which can enhance your gaming and viewing experience as you are able to see more pixels or details another thing is its high peak brightness which is at 2400 nits and while using it under the sunlight it doesn't struggle as much as the competitors which are other mid-range devices even though the device is protected by Corning Gorilla Glass Victus on the front it is still recommended for users to put a screen protector or a tempered glass on the display to protect it from scratches and other foreign objects as of course even if it has a Corning Gorilla Glass protection it doesn't mean that it is already scratch proof I also want to come in Xiaomi with the bezels on this device as you can see here on the sides and on the top it is relatively slim and it is also symmetrical in size here on the bottom there is a little bit of chin but if you're comparing it to its competitors it is actually slim for the price that you're paying and now let's move forward to the heart of the device this device is powered by the latest mid-range chipset by Snapdragon, which is the Snapdragon 8S Gen 3. It is a toned-down version of the flagship chipset, which is the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. But when it comes to performance, it should perform the same as the previous flagship chipset by Qualcomm, which is the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. When it comes to benchmarks, the performance is kind of underwhelming for me since I expected it to at least be on par or at least be slightly higher than the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. But as you can see here, the Antutu benchmark on, of this device is at 1.4 million points, which is not low, but it is underwhelming in a sense that we expect it to at least perform on par or higher than the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. And when it comes to Geekbench 6, the performance is also underwhelming since, as you can see, the scores are lower compared to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 of last year. When it comes to 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme Throttling Test, I am a bit underwhelmed with the performance since... As you can see here, the percentage that we got is only 80%. A good 
throttling test would get a score of at least 90 to 95 percent that would be a very great score but it isn't bad also because if it's bad it should be around 75 percent or lower so i would say it is just okay but not that okay if you get my point when it comes to the heat while doing the Antutu benchmark, it only got around 41 degrees Celsius at max. But when it comes to the throttling test on 3D mark, it got around 48 degrees Celsius, which is quite alarming. But it didn't stay that long on the temperature since after around like 15 loops out of 20 loops on that test, the device temperature slowly dwindle down which is a good sign of a great cooling system actual gaming performance on this device is actually quite the opposite of its benchmark scores as after i played Genshin impact for one and a half hour the highest record temperature that i got is only at 41 degrees celsius and it didn't even throttle at all considering that the game is running at maximum settings and the device is also on ultimate mode which supposedly should prioritize performance over heat management of the device and when it comes to the frame rates that i got while playing the game it didn't drop below 40 fps when there's a lot of enemies of course the frame rate will drop at around 40 to 45 fps but most of the time it is around 55 to 60 fps which is really great for this device aside from genshin impact its performance on firelight 84 pubg mobile codm and mobile legends this device performs great it doesn't even sweat at all it doesn't also heat up the max record temperature that i got while playing all those four games at around one and a half hour to two hours per game it only reached around around 38 39 degrees celsius which is very low considering that all of these games that i'm playing is running at the highest settings that there is when it comes to chipset optimization here on codm you are able to run the graphic quality at very high and frame rate at ultra but if you want to run the frame rate at ultra you need to set your graphic quality to medium only but if you want to run on very high graphic quality you can only set your frame rate to max now when it comes to Firelight 84, the graphics we have here is at extreme. Graphics quality and frame rate is at extreme also. Then for the resolution, it is available in high resolution. When it comes to PUBG Mobile, the graphics that we have here is Ultra HDR and the frame rate is also at Ultra. But if we lower it down to HDR, we are able to unlock extreme frame rate. As you can see here and lastly here on mobile legends it only comes in at high frame rate and high graphics only since of course the chipset that is used on this device is still new Munto needs time to optimize their game for this chipset but weirdly enough while i was playing a rank match on this device i noticed that the frame rate actually hit up to 120 frames per second which you can actually feel on person since 120 fps is really smooth compared to 60 fps so you can really notice the difference even though it is only at high frame rate this device weirdly enough runs at 120 fps while you're playing mobile legends even though it doesn't have ultra frame rate now let's talk about its cameras. Here on the front, we have a 20 megapixel Omnivision OV20B, which we've seen in most or actually all Xiaomi mid-range devices from the last one or two years. Then moving here on the back, we have a dual camera setup with a dual flash here on the side. Here we have a 50 megapixel Sony LYT 600 sensor. And here on the bottom, we have a 8 megapixel Sony IMX355 sensor. When it comes to taking photos on this main camera, it is a hit or miss. In perfect scenarios or perfect conditions, this device performs good. But when it comes to indoor photos, I would say 
sometimes it could be great but in some cases the details on the images would be a bit pixelated and here on our first image example as you can see here the tone on this image is a bit cool compared to real life then for the color buildings here it is saturated compared to real life which is typical in xiaomi mid-range devices but the details are there moving forward here on 2x as you can see the details are still there and it is actually quite usable then here on 6x details are still there but of course compared to 2x the quality or the detail on this image is slightly lacking but still nonetheless it is still usable then here on 10x as you can see details isn't really there but still it is usable not like usable in the sense that you can post it on social media and everyone will be wowed about it and when it comes to this one specific image as you can see it is very green when it comes to color and as you can see in real life it doesn't really look like that at all it might be an issue when it comes to its ai performance but it can be resolved by updates coming from xiaomi and as you can see on the other images the quality is good since i took those photos in a good lighting condition another example that i got here as you can see on 1x zoom the camera performs good as usual on 2x as you can see it is still good and still usable here on 6x as you can see the details are deteriorating as usual but still usable and here on 10x yeah quality is really showing the quality is really showing here still usable but not usable in the sense that you can post it on social media now let's talk about the typical ultra wide camera of xiaomi the 8 megapixel ultra wide camera on this photo as you can see when zoomed out the quality is good but when you zoom in slightly you can already see the lack of detail and the lack of quality on this 8 megapixel sensor or rather camera that Xiaomi has placed on this device and on all of its other mid-range devices except the CV series and another photo that I have here as you can see yeah the quality isn't really there so I mean unless you really need to use the ultra wide camera I wouldn't be using this ultra wide camera at all one thing that I really like on the main camera of this device is the autofocus speed of this device. It is because of the AI that the Snapdragon 8s Gen 3 has. The AI helps to improve the speed and the accuracy of the autofocus of the camera. And as you can see on my video, the autofocus really snaps right away when you focus it on your subject. When it comes to video on the main camera, this device can run up to 4K 60fps which is really good news. And as you can see here, the video performance of this device is good. As you can see, the detail, the quality, the smoothness especially is really great. Now let's go to nighttime photos. As you can see, the scenario is very dark. But when we turned on the night mode, BAM! As you can see, you are able to see everything even though it is very dark the quality of course as expected is not top notch nor comparable to daylight conditions but still it is pretty amazing for the selfie camera when it comes to video you are able to shoot this device up until 1080p 60fps then as usual the video quality and the photo quality is not that great since Xiaomi has been using this sensor on all of their mid-range devices ever since like 2021 or 2022. Now let's talk about its battery and charging. The battery that we have here is 5000 mAh battery and it performs the same as its competitors. This device can last at around 7 to 8 hours. When it comes to charging, this device can support up until 90 watts. And while testing its charging speed using its 90 watts charging cable 
it's kind of weird that I'm only getting 45 to 50 minutes of charging time since that kind of charging time is the same charging time as to 67 watts but one thing that I noticed on the charging brick is that it produced less heat compared to the 67 watts charging brick when it comes to other features of this device of course this device has NFC and your typical infrared blaster for you to be able to control your TV, your monitor, your electric fan, your aircon, and other appliances. Now for my final verdict on this device. If you're a gamer that wants a decent camera, and most importantly, a good display and good performance, this device is the best out of every device in the market. But if you're more of a casual user that plays some games but mostly use the device on social media, then this device is still good. I could recommend you this device. But if you're more of a photography person, you want a very good camera performance and you don't mind having a terrible gaming performance, then this device isn't really for you since as what I have said a while ago, the camera performance is really a hit or miss. And here ends our review on the Redmi Turbo 3. Comment down below if you have any questions when it comes to this device and I will try to answer your questions as soon as possible. Once again, this is AXM Tech Reviews and I'll see you guys in the next video.